Oh no, we waited too long. It started to Where, pick up. Uh-oh. We talk about Star Trek with Ricardo because he has never watched. This is his first trip through Star Trek. <clears throat> Any Star- <laughs> This is Navy Star Trek, and we talk about Star Trek and Star Trek accessories. <laughs> <laughs> that is a thing. There is Star Trek and then Star Trek accessories. <laughs> Yeah, ever seen the Enterprise pizza cutter? <laughs> that I exists. have that. I have that actually. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I also have yeah the, the golden disc pizza cut. All these pizza cutters, but <laughs> for some reason. extensive collection of pizza cutters. Yeah, for some reason. I have to use some people to collect thimbles. You're you, you're the pizza cutter guy. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime I, somebody goes to Cancun, they're like, yeah, I got to get fucking Marvin a pizza cutter. <laughs> 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 my my favorite piece of Star Trek paraphernalia unfortunately got lost in a move. It was oh, yeah. it, it was a letter opener that was a bothleth, which is for Ricardo's sake, uh, a bothleth is a Klingon sword. Ooh. So, so well, the, it's like it's a double handed like Klingon blade. Yeah, that can be used oh. as a sword or kind of like a staff almost. Um, it's very practically looking. Super it's, unwieldy. It's like fighting with a car bumper that's really sharp. Yeah, <laughs> and that you're more likely to hurt yourself than your opponent. But that's the Klingon way. Well, so. that's uh, every weapon. That's all <laughs> Nun- nunchucks are that way. Yeah, Wait, nunchucks you're are absolutely. especially like, oh boy, yeah. Be very yeah, you're absolutely yeah. right about that. <laughs> there, there's a 99.9 chance you're going to hit yourself in the nuts. Yeah. Just real quick, yeah. that reminds me that in in uh, the line of work that I happen to currently work in. Every so often, oh, yeah. I, I, I come thought you were across... going to say, I got two sets of nunchucks. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> and you bust them out I, now, I, and you start no, spitting see, them I, on your fingertips? <laughs> like, every so often, I have to look at uh, minute orders from court uh, regarding, like, dependents of the court. Like, people go to, like, juvie and stuff, or people uh-huh. who are, like... Or actually, th- those would be wards of court. But uh, inside the clauses, amongst all the uh, amongst all the lines and lines of the court order, it says like the the minor is not allowed to have weapons, and then it specifically lists nunchucks. <laughs> really? Specifically, yeah, I remember. I remember you which, talking about this, <laughs> which means that there's. There have been incidents <laughs> with nunchucks that had to be addressed for future reference. <laughs> yeah. This kid. Fantastic. Yeah. Anytime it, you is, see legal stuff. Is his name Michael? <laughs> Not, well, it wasn't even just one. It, it was a standard clause that I oh, saw it's like in a all standard, of the war minute It's a standard orders. clause. Oh. Yes. That's, wow. why it's so, that's why it's so great. Oh, man. Anyway. <sighs> yes. Well, I like clauses. I like the Santa Claus. <laughs> The movie, not the actual person. He's a piece of shit. <laughs> wow, Tim Allen took a real like nose yeah, dip, dude. huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to the point where, right. where Toy they Story won't... doesn't need any more movies. It's That's also true. to the point where he they won't even put him in his upcoming own Buzz Lightyear movie. Well, <laughs> Buzz, Buzz Lightyear, them. Buzz Lightyear yeah, is yeah. not the Buzz Lightyear. It's not like yeah, a young yeah, Buzz yeah, Lightyear. yeah, yeah. Is. But still, let's you know, get her Buzz Lightyear. If they made a Woody correct. spinoff. They would still get like. You know, Tom Hanks. No, nah, not Tom Hanks. Get... They would get his brother who supplies all of the Woody lines for like Kingdom Hearts. And yeah, shit. yeah. Colin Hanks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, they, they would get um. They would get Chet Chet Hanks. Chet Hanks. <laughs> the rapper Chet Hanks. <laughs> oh, right. His son, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. His son's a rapper. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. Sorry, sorry to go so off track about sorry, some Star yes. Trek, everybody, but. Anyway, newbie Star Trek, Ricardo's first time through Star Trek shows, and we're currently in TNG second season now, and uh, we're on the second episode, which is Where Silence Has Lease. Very strange name. Turns out it's from a poem. Okay. Mm, yeah. I was wondering why it had that title, given what occurs, Yeah, it doesn't seem all that related, but maybe you can share some insight. I, it's from a poem. I forget the name of the guy, but the poem seemed to be about like... Someone like trying to get gold 
So <laughs> gold, get gold. Yeah, I know. Maybe I'm not. I'm not a very good poem reader. Maybe so I didn't quite understand what the why, why this is referenced. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, it was. It's for, it's named after. It's just a reference to a poem. It's not a very famous poem either. It's just a a, a poem by a a fairly famous poet. But not yeah. Walt Whitman, right? No, not leaves no. of grass my ass. Not not the yeah. uh, not the chocolate guy. <laughs> Willie Waltman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he and his malted chocolate factory. Yeah. He's got delicious chocolate, but his poems suck. <laughs> uh, okay. I barely got it. Was, <laughs> <laughs> took me a second. I don't know if I should blame myself. It's it was me. It was or me. not. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! Uh, th- th- this was uh, the first, um, second episode. Right away, we do a bottle episode where we never yeah. leave the ship, and yeah. uh, but it's it's kind of, in my opinion, very good. It's a really no, it's, good it episode. Is a, it is a real good episode, yeah. and it didn't even need Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah, I, 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 I had said last week I remembered this episode kind of fondly, and I feel like I confirmed my memory. I was like, oh yeah, this is good. Um, at least to me. I mean, I don't know. Um, but anyway, this episode aired on November twenty eighth of nineteen eighty eight. So, Dan, could you please tell us what happened around that time? More like around the sun. <laughs> this is the name of this song. Yes. Anyway, um, where was I? <laughs> November twenty eighth, nineteen eighty eight. Right. Uh, Bad Medicine by Bon Jovi was just topped the charts, ah. whereas the Locomotion by Kylie Minogue, Cami White herself, was starting to fall off the charts at position number. That's 10. that's that's really what I only know her for. Is being yeah, Cammy. she's yeah. This is Cami. <laughs> Did you know that Cami was a singer? <laughs> oh my god! And she's that's... an Australian singer. <laughs> wow! Wow! We wow! Wow! Also, just uh, debuted in the box office. Five days prior on the 23rd was a movie called Scrooge, starring Bill Murray in a, a Christmas Carol style story. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was directed by Richard Donner, and I didn't know that until I looked this up today. Oh. Yeah, so Superman's director directed Scrooge. I didn't know that. Does it feel oh, like a what, Richard Donner movie? What what date is it again? Oh, sorry, I, I uh oh. November 23rd was when it de- was when it premiered. November 23rd, 1988. Yes. yes. Oh. We missed uh, we missed a great movie this year. I mean, by the time that these episodes started, the greatest movie of all time had already been released earlier in the year. Predator. So I should mention it. Bloodsport. Oh, Bloodsport. Bloodsport was February. <laughs> Do you remember what date that was? 26th. February 26th, 1988. Oh, so, so we, we would have talked about it in a previous podcast. I think podcast. we did. Yeah. I, th- I think did we, we did. I might have been too high. I yeah, we would have. Yeah, things. we would. I remember, or at least I remember in one specific instance, I, I called out a, a JCVD movie just for you. That would have been it, probably. Could be, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, uh, the very last thing that uh, I forgot to mention last episode um, that happened in the interim between season one and season two, uh, our host Marvin was born. Oh, that's right. <laughs> How about that? I'm, I'm a time skip. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you were lost in between seasons one and two. I'm the so, character that shows up in the, uh, after a time skip. Yeah, you're a baby <laughs> out of time. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I, I only bring that up because I've been watching a lot of Young Justice, and that show oh, yeah. loves time skips and just throwing oh, characters boy, out does of it. nowhere. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wish they would kind of focus on certain characters sometimes, and then they don't. Yeah. Anyway, I don't want the, I, this. <laughs> that could very easily turn to a DC podcast. Do not want to do that. My section is over. Well, thank you very much, Ooh. Dan. Uh, so, this was where silence has lease. Which, um, not only the first bottle episode of the season, but it's also like the first, like, really, I feel like the, like a very good example of like a science mystery episode for TNG. Um, I feel like it's just, it's just very interesting, I think. So, Ricardo, um, I think Denise Crosby has a question for you. Ricardo, could you please tell us what happened in this episode? Yes, I can. Never, <laughs> never forget. Never forget. We'll never forget her. Death. Thank you, it. Lieutenant. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so the episode starts off, and Luke Picard, the captain, aka Lukey Wookie. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, damn it. We're, I feel like we're all right. of our brains are working at like 80% capacity today. What's wrong with us? <laughs> Lukey, <Lukey. laughs> So, So he's worried. And he's doing a little, <laughs> look, I'm going to be honest, he's doing a little overacting. Yeah. <laughs> he's like looking, he's looking over Data's shoulder. And I'm like, God damn it. People. Well, to the- be fair, he's also in like an extreme close up. We're yeah, so yeah, close yeah. on his face when he's, why he's scared. <laughs> yeah. And so he's kind of worried and, 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 and um, he, he sits down and um, what's your name? Is like, hey. You seem worried, and and he's like, "You fucking think, dude? You fucking think?" <laughs> he didn't say that, but that's that's what I'm the vibe I'm getting. And and she's like, "Oh, because of Riker or because of Worf?" And she's like, "Both, both, mm-hmm. oh, and the transporter because he's been gone for months. He's out there kicking people's <laughs> asses. Shirtless. What would we do without our what greatest do without transporter? Him? Yeah, yeah, they had a new transporter. Um, so <clears throat> we cut to." And we're, we don't know this, but we're in the holodeck. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, I don't know how long they've been in there. They could have been there for hours or days, <laughs> but Riker and Worf are in there. And they're like, they're kind of like, they're looking for a fight. And Riker's dirty. It he's already like he's fucked th- up. So he's been yeah. in there for at least a while. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's a full, I think, I think it's even there for days. Dude. <laughs> Cause that's how dirty he, this guy is. <laughs> that would help me like. Uh, that that this scene would make more sense in general, I guess, if it had been that long. Yeah, and I wish they would have done that. I I, I would have appreciated it because then they would have given us a little more insight into the holodeck and and how maybe they train and how Worf reacts to certain things. I mean, this is like a danger. Scene. This reminded me of the danger room scene from the beginning of X Men Three, right? Yeah, Where it's yeah. just like they're just doing this intense training, but it yeah. doesn't really mean anything. So it is a nice touch though. Like already we're seeing like the set design feels Mm -hmm. like it's been like, you know, they've upgraded a lot on lighting and and how they design this place. There's handheld camera work. Yeah. Yeah. So the director for this episode, um, what's his name? Uh, The director for this episode was, uh, Tim, wasn't Tim Allen? I can tell you that. Yeah. You, don't, I don't, you don't have to look it up. I can tell you. Uh, oh, not the, his, his name was. Uh, I, th- I hope I'm saying this name correctly. Winrick Colby, um, and uh, he was known for directing a lot of TNG episodes. And uh, the important thing he wanted to get across in this episode, because it was a bottle episode, is that he was like, "There's way like the set is just not designed to be shot at like TV angles for that long, or if you did." It gets really boring. So he went out of his way to do all sorts of different cinematic angles and make it like really cool looking. That's why he had that really close zoom up on Picard's face. Well, why this scene is all like dramatic and stuff. So he he was just trying to make it not boring because he knew we're going to be staring at the bridge for all like the whole episode. So it makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I um, think he succeeded. Yeah. 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 So Worf puts on a power glove that he finds <laughs> on the floor and it's got like blades or something. It, it looks like like it. it's like. It's like a Klingon brass knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> with a weird like a thumb kind of, blade. A weird thumb blade. <laughs> it's for hitchhiking slash opening cans. Yeah. <laughs> and and then uh, a turtle and Skeletor attack them. <laughs> yeah. It's a ninja it's turtle. turtle. Skeletor. Skeletor. It's, Skeletor. It's, it's not quite a turtle. It's an armadillo man or something. Yeah. It's uh, one of the mutated animals from TMNT. Some. Yeah. Yeah. yeah maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then Skeletor. Yeah. Uh, attack him yeah. and they fight them and Worf is pumped dude Worf <laughs> is fucking jack dude he beats him up and then he he's so in in the heat of the moment that he almost attacks fucking Riker yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. Riker has to command ah. him to stop. yeah Riker has <laughs> like, to give him a direct command yeah. Yeah. yeah he has to yell those Russian words that, that make the winter soldier <laughs> Stand Person. down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone have any idea what these assailants like are supposed to be? No, I have no idea. No, no. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and Riker has to go. They just pulled any over, random monster costume out of the like the CBS like yeah. studio. Like like Power room. Ranger Sentai style. They're just like, yeah. we just need uh we need villains today. Oh, yeah. what do we got? What do we got? <laughs> and uh and out. And uh, and Worf is like really jacked up, dude. And he's got to yell. He, the record yells at him. He's like, "Hey, the the exercise is over, dude. Calm the fuck down." <laughs> and then uh, both Riker and Worf they just take off their weapons and they just throw them on the floor. And they're like, oh. 
we're done here. Yeah. Uh, and the the holodeck doors open, and you realize it's a holodeck. And I wish they would have said <clears throat> that that they had been here for days, because I would have explained <laughs> how like in a trance Worf was, like he was in battle mode. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I wish yeah, they would have. Apparently, been like, it only oh. takes a few minutes to to get him to that state. Yeah, I think well, he, yeah, he just, yeah, he just yeah. does it every day. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, because Riker even says, you do yeah. this every day. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and also, Worf is like, uh, actually, actually yeah, my, my stuff is personal. Yeah. He's like, I'm, I'm, I'm not only fighting, but I'm fucking. Um, <laughs> I'm fuck fighting. <laughs> yeah, I'm fuck fighting. Yeah. And, and or fight fucking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Either. either It could be either. Uh, and then you realize, you know, it, 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 it does cool effects now, like in this season. Like, they walk out of the room and Riker walks off camera and then like the room turns into like, just like basically back to the, the, the grid. Yeah. yeah just yeah. a grid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, when, yeah. Ones and zeros. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> and then, um, so I thought, well, oh, this is interesting. Like this is a very weird, like episode to start off like this. Like, are they probably going to fight? I thought they were going to fight. Um, what is it? Klingons. Mm-hmm. I thought they were getting him jacked up to fight. Yeah. Them. But it's just a um, it's just a weird cold opening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's weird that 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 Picard was nervous for nothing. Yeah, like, I think it, I think it's just like uh, let's just have a jokey cold opening and then call yeah. it a day, sort of thing. And like, actually, yeah. I want to briefly bring up uh, how weird is it that like in a really v- jungly vegetate like there's a lot of vegetation in there, but then there also seems to be like steel staircases and catwalks and pipes. I thought it was jungle. kind of like like the where are they like the, sin- to be. the syndrome planet where like oh this is a planet it's jungly but there's there used to be like a civilization here with weapons and you know it's it's kind of odd how often we're finding similarities to the Incredibles <laughs> in this show because <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I don't disagree with you I don't <laughs> yeah. it's syndrome syndrome planet <laughs> yeah and those villains were from syndrome he hired them. The guy, the guy had a face, and he was there for so long that he fucking lost it. Um, so <laughs> we're back on the bridge, and uh, and they're basically exploring a part of the universe that hasn't been charted by man vessel. Mm-hmm. So they're 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 going over there, they're checking it out, and they see something that appears, and then it, it it disappears, and then it appears again. And they can't figure out what the fuck it is, and of course they're like, well, let's go fucking check it out. Check, let's let's go see what it is, what it is. And it's kind of, it's not quite a black hole. It's like a, a blob of nothingness, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. Right. And and then uh, fucking Wesley shows up and you're like, fuck, this episode's going to be shit. <laughs> uh, but then you get over it. You, you get over it after a couple of minutes. <laughs> and uh, so basically, the, and then, and then um, they can't figure out what it is, right? Mm-hmm. And they're getting closer to it, closer to it. And then they're, they're basically in it, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, and then some weird shit starts happening, right? Yeah, where like, it's like it starts breaking laws of physics. Yep, where they seem like they're not getting anywhere. My favorite is when um, like like this is where like the slow. This is this is one of the episodes I remember seeing a lot on like TBS or BBC America because mm-hmm. it would just show in rotation a lot. And I just remembered this is the pace of what I remember TNG being, where they spend like thirty minutes just trying to understand what's going on. <laughs> So like mm. they try all sorts of different things, and then my favorite is when uh, they put the probe, they leave it alone. <laughs> probe, yeah. yeah. They 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 fly away and they fly yeah. towards it, and then that like uh, Dan, you would know this feels that feels super outer wilds, like oh, dark yeah. ramble. Where you're like, yeah, actually, it's yeah. very much like that. Which makes me I wasn't wonder... even thinking about that while watching it, but now that you mention it, totally. Yeah, th- which makes me think that's probably at least some inspiration for. Outer Wilds, Dark Bramble, at least for from this episode, because it just it's just almost exactly the same thing where you actually use a probe to ground yourself as mm-hmm. to where you are in the place. So I thought that was cool. And I mean, then, it is an ingenious yeah. way to try grounding mm-hmm. yourself. So mm-hmm. like, I'm glad that that idea is tried, mm-hmm. even yeah. though it does eventually fail. Mm-hmm. But it, it's yeah. it's it's a good consideration. So they can't figure out what the fuck it is. They're like, we we try the probe method nothing we tried we literally tried probing it <laughs> nothing <laughs> happened uh there's nothingness yet something at the same time mm-hmm. and then and then Riker tells a cool story about like olden days when ships would sail on the sea and and people thought the earth, earth was flat because at one point the, like they're like we could be staring at the end of universe or like 
the whole of the universe. They don't know what the fuck is up to. Right. Uh, but they talked about how people used to think the earth was flat. And if a, if a certain captain went off course and, and he, he <laughs> yeah. they would kill him. They would kill the captain. Yeah. yeah basically a mutiny. Yeah. And, 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 and Riker goes, but I, you, you don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> and he's like, oh, thanks for the reassurance. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and even data's like, what the fuck dude? <laughs> even before even? this, like the, the uh, wharf also had a story where he was just like, I don't like it. I want to shoot photon torpedoes at it now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, we skipped over how he oh, keeps right, freaking right. out because yeah. the probe disappears. Rightfully so. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> it just turns right. out he was completely right. We like, shouldn't as have soon as the probe, like, goes inside the <laughs> void and then, you know, blips out of existence, he's like, well, yeah, I reckon we're going to yellow alert, yeah. sir. Yeah. Yeah. And, it's, and then uh, Picard, I love what he does after that. Like, where he just why? turns to him and gives him, like, this, like, what the <laughs> fuck? You, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Sort of a look. And it's like, but, but then he goes, like, but, okay, you can you couldn't explain i i don't mind just let's just let me well, know yeah why. like i want to know what the hell you're thinking like why are you so fucking afraid yeah but then, and then Wolf old- is like uh sorry it, it's just an old klingon legend and, and, and i'm i'm scared <laughs> i'm scared <laughs> I'm, I'm big scared <laughs> um i forgot to deliver out about that <laughs> <laughs> he sounded just like that <laughs> oh, it's a, i'm sorry captain <laughs> i want to shoot captain. it <laughs> sorry captain i was just scared um and so they call the doctor the grumpy old doctor yeah um and she comes in she's like like have you been briefed and uh, right away she's like oh boy fucking data's here (laughs) (laughs) oh boy (laughs) and and uh, like 10 seconds in she's fucking already being robophobic dude (laughs) yeah (laughs) like she can't hold it in like like do we have to establish this every single time that you hate robots yeah get it plus (laughs) this is the second time but this is gonna be the second time that he's proven himself yeah to be important so you shut the fuck up and go stab you on neck with your stupid fucking pen dude epi pen <laughs> get the fuck out of here dude you fucking idiot um and so so they're they're trying to maybe test something like to see what we can do what we can find out what it is and there's nothing there's no that we can't figure it out and then, and then they do the whole probe thing and nothing and then they talk to uh, Jordy in engineering, like, hey, is everything okay? Because basically th- they start heading out. They go in the hole and then they want to leave, but it doesn't seem like they're moving. They're just standing in, in the same place. But mm-hmm. it turns out they are moving, but going nowhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's really fucking weird, man. Yeah. And <clears throat> I don't like this episode, this part of the episode. The uh, late, latter parts, I really love. So this but part, here, this part with the like, did, like drag on and stuff. Or? Yeah, and also like there could have been a different B storyline. Like I like the ending, and I don't know. I like the ending so much that I don't know. It, this didn't satisfy me for some reason, and I can't pinpoint why. I could see because I really like that there wasn't a B story. I like the stories better when they don't have B. St- the episodes better when they don't have B stories because I feel well, like they can. Yeah. Because because to me this is the pace of Star Trek. This is like the slow, contemplative, quietly well, trying to figure I, out what's going on. I didn't hate on. that it was slow. I just, it was missing something mm. and I don't know what it is. Mm. I can't figure it out, but I don't know what it is. Maybe it's the fact that I thought it was going to be a Klingon fight and it wasn't. Maybe that's what threw me off. Maybe the holodeck part is what threw me off. Maybe if we had just concentrated on the fact that like, hey, we found this black, black hole thing. We don't know what it is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is fucked up. Me, mm-hmm. that's the problem. I think I think that's the problem. And so they they keep going, they can't figure it out. And then a ship appears. Mm-hmm. They the 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 they see the ship appearing and it turns out it looks like um is it a, a Klingon ship? It's a Romulan ship. It's a Romulan ship. Romulan warbird. And it shoots at him mm-hmm. and they they they're like, Oh fuck, one more shot and they're gonna get us, man. We gotta yeah. be careful. And then they shoot back and then it explodes. And yeah. Captain Picard's like that's fucking too easy, man. Yeah. Too easy. You know what I was thinking? Um, as soon as the Romulan ship shows up and they're they're like code red or whatever the code is. Yeah. I would kick out Wes- Wesley. Like, Wesley, get the fuck out of here, dude. You <laughs> fucking kid, dude. You're you're not allowed to drive. Fucking get somebody else in here who hasn't <laughs> tried to kill us 34 Yeah, times. later he does go missing. But yes. it's just to be replaced by a guy so he can die. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, just, up. he's just very, very <laughs> yeah. like... It's so like yeah. the moment you see no it, yeah. announcement, but the moment you yeah. see that black guy in his seat, you know and he's dead. Like the there's the no moment, reason the, well, to have swapped well, over to him. The moment the <laughs> moment you yeah. see somebody else in Wesley's seat, but you don't 
get an explanation of where Wesley is. That's what I knew. If they had said <laughs> like Wesley, um, uh, Worf, you know, is is he left? Why don't you man his comms or whatever bullshit they could have assigned him? <laughs> they could have shifted people around, and then I'd have been like, okay, that's fine. yeah. But he, they just cut back, and he's gone. And I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, there's no explanation at all. Mm. Other, yeah. they could have. You're right. They could have explained it in like, oh, we're in red alert, Wesley. You're a minor. Get off the bridge. Or at least like, hey, go move over to a different like part of the bridge. Yeah, because you know? it's That's dangerous like, now. Yeah. yeah. And, and or, he's or what if look, this crazy void turned Wesley into a black guy? <laughs> oh. And he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> and then he shapeshifts back into his old self. <laughs> uh, um and and so they they, they kill the they, they they beat the the Romulan ship and then another ship appears. Mm-hmm. And I thought uh, the ship looks exactly like the Enterprise, and I thought, oh, clonesies, or like a weird like multiverse thing. And I got yeah, really yeah, excited. I what you mean. Maybe this is also why I got really excited and <laughs> it let me down because I thought, oh, multiverse. Mm-hmm. I like where this is going, dude. Mm-hmm. Getcha. Yeah, I gotcha, gotcha. You know, so I we've had this. I've had this problem with other episodes too, where it's like my imagination leads me to <laughs> thinking it's a it's a crazier thing yeah, yeah, than it yeah, is, yeah. and then it it it's fine. But I'm like, man, my my imagination led me to a wild place. Too. <laughs> um, yeah. it's like it's like I read the book and then I saw the movie and then I'm like, mm, the book's way better. <laughs> it's like it's so, like the line in. Uh, uh, I feel like you've been primed by all sorts of media that use TNG as a starting point <laughs> Yeah, that, you yeah. know, like evolved and, and built atop that. And, and you know, kind of like, you know, Seinfeld now isn't yeah. as funny to a new viewer as it used to be because Seinfeld was the first. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like sometimes that's going to happen to you. Yeah, I know. I know. Um, but I, I, I accept the good with the bad. So we, we must go on. Please, please um, accept it. So. So uh, they they figure out that it's there's no life forms on the ship and mm-hmm. it's the uh, USS Yamato. Yeah, Yamato. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is a um, reference to uh, the anime Battleship Yamato. So, oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Space Battleship Yamato. So, yeah, Space Battleship. Yamato, which is it's funny in the anime, it's literally just like an ocean ship, but it's in space. <laughs> I mean, they did some tweaks to the design, know, but it but is it's, clearly meant to yeah, like yeah. very directly evoke the famous battleship. Yeah, from, it looks it yeah. looks very much like it. <laughs> so, so, so Riker's it looks like, hey, cool though. Yeah, yeah. They're like, hey, Riker's like, let me go in there. I need to get off this ship, dude. Wesley's <laughs> here, and I fucking hate him, dude. He had me tuck him in last night. Uh, <laughs> he didn't say that. But, uh, Riker's like, hey. Let me and Worf go in there. We're fucking hot. We've been working out, dude. We're fucking. It's like <laughs> we're it's buddies like we're, now. Yeah, we're fucking. Yeah. We're, we're in it, dude. We're like lethal weapon. Um, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna fucking torture me. They're gonna fucking electrocute my balls. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, so so they're like, all right. And then they head over to the transporter room, and sadly, Jade Statham's not there this time. Yeah, he's off fighting crime. You know, all oiled up, but um. So there's this dude, he, and we've talked about him. What's his name? Ian Cohen. Miles or? O'Brien. Miles O'Brien. Yeah, Miles is, O'Brien. Is that his name? Yeah. Is that his character's name? Yeah, his character's name is Miles O'Brien. Yeah. He's still not named, I think, yet. Oh, but okay. No, still no. Yeah, but um, yeah, I mean, right now he's just a bit character who just shows up randomly. But um, he's also it, the guy from Con Air. That's yeah. He is. Is he? A, he yeah, him. he's uh, he's like the FBI guy that that puts the uh, undercover cop on the on the sh- on the plane. And puts a puts a gun in his in his thing. He's he's the reason that Conair goes to shit. Oh, I like only vaguely remember that. I don't know. Yeah, dude, that's mm. where I know him from. Okay, it's okay. possible that we have gone over this before. No. Could be. <laughs> I'm having a little deja vu, but it could be. <laughs> well, Conair always leads to deja vu. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Uh, I wish they had Cyrus the Virus on this on this show, dude. <laughs> He'd be a badass, dude. I mean, he would, John Malkovich dude, oh, on a gr- on a John Malkovich, a great Luke Picard. Oh, mm. I was yeah. about like well, as soon as you he s- is as a soon fantastic said, actor. He would have yes. the gravitas to pull it off. This as- is how he talks. <laughs> <laughs> they need they need to give him lots of scenes where he's just yeah. outraged and furious, yeah. Yeah. but but a very calm Mr. outrage. Data. Like, Data. you're here uh, he's in a okay. bathrobe yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so so they, they they set their 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 uh their phasers to stun or whatever they're called. I don't know. They're fucking <laughs> they're finger cuff guns. Uh and, <laughs> and they yeah. yeah, all right. And then they get sent over to the to the Yamato, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then sister but, but they don't they don't appear together. They're like they 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 fucked up. This guy sucks, dude. Is a fucking trust, dude. <laughs> and he he put them in separate rooms. And 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 so Riker's like, oh fuck, dude. Uh, and he's walking. It would have been great if he said, "Damn you, O'Brien." <laughs> yeah, damn you, O'Brien. <laughs> where's Statham? Where's where's our transporter? Statham's gone for one day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not only is a great is he a great transporter, but he's also a great horror transporter. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, so Riker's like, "Oh, what the hell?" He's looking around, and then he hears a scream, and he's like, "No!" And then, and then he he like runs to get to find Worf to help him, and Worf's like, "I was coming here to help you, dude. Dude, I heard you screaming, dude." <laughs> yeah, and they almost shot each other. That'd been cool though if Worf's like, "Oh, I shot Riker again, <laughs> <laughs> again. Yeah, <laughs> we've got to clone him again." Oh. <laughs> uh, I can't I'll admit stop. though that the like the screaming, howling that Riker hears is fairly haunting. Yeah, it's pretty mm-hmm. creepy sound. To be mm-hmm. honest. Uh, yeah, just it like sounds that. like it sounds like the the, the yeah. mating call. It sounds like it's, the, it's, the mating I'm call the of ghost of Ray Romano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say <laughs> the <laughs> mating call of Ray Romano. <laughs> oh, yeah. hey, Linda. I don't even know. I ended Gene Linda. Hackman's career. <laughs> <laughs> my brother's tall <laughs> <laughs> tall brother um and so they, they they run back into each other and they're like oh fuck some some sketchy's going on here dude and they they're having the bridge has trouble communicating with them mm-hmm. and and fucking the transporters like i lost i lost the lock on them it's like yeah bitch because you're a fucking shitty ass transporter <laughs> dude Fucking miles. It's all miles. Yeah. Poor Miles. It's just it's his first day there this season. <laughs> yeah. No, he was there last episode. He did. Oh shit, you're right. Never yeah, mind. Yes, he, he has Damn no it, Miles. <laughs> oh, Brian, um, you drug. <laughs> yeah. So so um so they they go they go to the bridge and of course it looks just like the Enterprise, right? So they're like, oh fuck, yeah, it's weird. And then, and then there's this weird thing that happens where they go into a different bridge. So mm-hmm. like, there's like two bridges. Impossible spaces are happening. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? We're here, getting non Euclidean up in here. It's yeah, portal. Dude. Like they walk in and they see themselves on the other side of the doorway yeah, and shit. Like, like Dan said, two clitorises. And um, <laughs> so, so they're like, oh, fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, male Klingons, I think, have yeah. two dicks. Yeah. Do they? So, yeah. so female Klingon. That's what I read. Must have two clitoris. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's not only, It's science, guys. It, come on. The viewers are like, well, you just have fucking pot. Dude, it's science, dude. Read about it, dude. <laughs> Open a book. Uh, <laughs> Open a book. <laughs> go outside. Go, to the, go to the library. Yeah. <laughs> go to the library. Check out a book, man. Um, <laughs> so. Oh, God. <laughs> So these clips so they, are in the book. Don't worry about <laughs> what the hell are we talking book? about? Uh, uh, so then, so then they're like, "Oh fuck, dude! What, what, what the fuck is up with this, these two bridges?" And then, fucking really trippy, trippy shit's happening where Worf goes into to go into the other bridge, mm-hmm. and he sees Riker, and they turns around, and Riker's behind him. Yeah, two yeah. fucking Rikers, just like Double Impact with John. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, whoa, what the fuck's going on? And then Riker, and then and then and then Worf goes into the next room, and then there's like a weird loop where like Riker comes in through, like yeah. through the back door. It's fucking really trippy, and and I was like, oh man, this is, uh, this is too much for me. Uh, it's also too much out. for Worf. Because yeah, he and he's like, oh, freaking he's like, out. I have to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. so it's like one Riker, one yeah. bridge. Yeah. Yeah. And then he just yeah. starts like fighting yeah. with the door. Yeah, it, this this episode does not make Worf look very intelligent <laughs> or yeah just, he seems him easily like overwhelmed yeah, yeah. the first thing carried away. like picard says about him at the beginning of the episode is like there are some things about a klingon that are best left unknown which is yeah. <laughs> implying Never. he doesn't want to associate with Worf. Yeah. It's and like then, you don't it's like i don't want to know how you train <laughs> you don't want to show uh, klingon's puzzles because they freak the shit out <laughs> and they fucking <laughs> 
<laughs> you give them a you give them like a, a jigsaw Rubik's puzzle, cube. Yeah. Or like a jigsaw puzzle. <laughs> they knock it off the fucking table, and so and so back on the bridge, <laughs> the dude who took over the du- <laughs> the dude the dude the dude who took over for for fucking Wesley. Uh, yeah. Tommy, Tommy Westlake. It, <laughs> he, he's like, oh, oh, there's an opening in, in the the hole that they're in. Yeah, whatever. Let's go, let's go, let's yeah. go. Come and on, he's like, come let's on, get the fuck come out on, of Captain, here. Let me go. Let's, yeah, l- let me drive this baby out of here. <laughs> and he's like, no, no, let you know, like let it go. It's gonna close. It's fine. We're not gonna leave without fucking Riker, my bestie Riker. Yeah, I'm a bestie. Yeah. And, and Worf, then, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Worf can stay. <laughs> and I then mean, so, well, he's right there. Yeah. And so so they're fucking this transporter is fucking shitty, dude. And he he can't get this guy. And so as the, the thing closes, uh they finally get them back and they're like they're like, uh oh, fuck. And then Riker comes in, he's like, Riker's fucking scared as shit, dude. He's like, two fucking Rikers, dude. I could barely stand myself, dude. Imagine <laughs> another one. And he comes in and he's fucking upset, dude. Yeah. I've never seen him this like work. Yeah, up. he's just like, I'm tired of this. He's, yeah, almost, he's it, never been that direct and <laughs> yeah. like pissed off at Picard. It's such a strange yeah. scene because he goes in and goes, I've had it with this. Use this yeah. technology to get us out of here. And then he walks <laughs> off screen. But yeah. then it pans over to Picard and Picard has this strange smile on his face. Where Picard yeah. is like, yeah, I finally got him or something. Yeah. I don't understand yeah. why he's smiling because it makes it seem Picard is super sinister or something. Yeah. And he's the one actually doing all this. It's yeah, really it does, it, odd. It I don't weird. know why. Yeah. And and so <laughs> for a while, so my imagination took me to the place where they had beamed up the clones. In my head, oh, it was, so you it thought the there multiverse. were like clones that the ship well, made? Maybe and... like the multiverse thing. My theory oh. was like, oh, they're the clones, and and then it got me thinking, like, dude, what if like ten, um, whatever fucking se- how many seasons are there of this show? Just seven. Okay, I went too much, too far. Uh, <laughs> what if like three seasons in, you find out that they left fucking the real Riker in the fucking ship, mm. and Worf and Riker have been there all, all alone, just fucking fucking each other because <laughs> the 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 multiverse Riker the was on the ship they can do on the ship yeah, yeah. I mean, and imagine that imagine that and that, i was like that's amazing that's an amazing storyline and then the episode was over it's like that's yeah, fucking that's not gonna happen <laughs> my episode well, now, now i'm starting to see better like how you were kind of misled by your own thinking because yeah. in that in that scene just prior you are seeing multiple rikers and yeah, yeah. and yeah. wharfs like everywhere like and it's really trippy. So mm-hmm. you can start to think like, well, are these separate entities or not? Exactly. Exactly. So uh, they come back and, and fucking Riker's f- losing it. Mm-hmm. And then the, the hole starts to open up, if you know what I mean. Um, yes. And you're like, oh. And then everyone like, gets a little excited. And it's like, hey, let's not fuck. Like the captain's like, let's not fuck around. Fuck around. Let's get the fuck out. Let's not fuck raw. Yeah. <laughs> let's not fuck around. <laughs> and, um, and then and then he's like and then uh, he went to to um Deanna Tr- Deanna Troy yeah Troy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh man I'm getting all <laughs> you'll my remember it on the first try one day <laughs> yeah, yeah <dude. laughs> by seven seasons in you'll be like <laughs> Deanna Troy <laughs> well, Deanna Deanna Troy <laughs> well because because you have my favorite character Tasha yeah uh and then Tasha's last name is Tasha Yar. 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 See, so there's too many goddamn people's names. <laughs> should, too many people on this bridge. Um, and, and so, the sh- so, so, uh, not Tasha, uh, but Deanna Troy is like, I'm, I'm, she's like, there's something here, but I can't, but there's no readings. So th- it's a real conundrum because they, they're, there's no readings of life, but she's kind of feeling something, mm-hmm. perhaps something intelligent. Uh, and then she's like, yeah, or we're like rats in a maze, blah, blah, blah. And I don't like this doctor, by the way. I don't like this new doctor. Uh, oh, you every changed your mind. Last episode, you said you liked her. I know. I know. I changed my mind. Okay. I don't like her hair. It's her hair. <laughs> That's uh, why. Mm. Yeah, I do yeah. think, though, it's, that she's too w- powerfully 80s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I do think, though, that she brings and this this might be maybe I'm being really mean to Beverly, but she brings an air of like wiseness that I think I never got. From Beverly. I agree. I agree with you. Though. Yeah, because yeah. like, like for example, she seems to solve everything based yep. on her analogy. So I, I pull that clip up because this is a line that 
Beverly would never say, but Pulaski would say it. Well, so. she would she would leave. Whistle. Yeah, she, Be- Beverly would be like, I don't know what's going on. And she would walk off set. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> but, was her MO. Yeah. And then Pulaski says this instead. Counselor, you said that you sensed no intelligence in all of this. You haven't changed in that belief. I'm not certain of that now, Captain. I do sense something unusual. Perhaps a different level of consciousness. Yes. Perhaps an intelligence so vast it eluded me. Rats in a maze. Exactly. Hmm? Explain. Well, everything we've been through reminds me of a laboratory experiment, as if something was testing our responses to stimuli. You suggesting... You suggesting that we're in some kind of laboratory? Yes. And she ended up being right. It's 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 interesting that yeah. the doctor... Yeah. Yeah. was the one who figured out what's philosophically going on before the counselor, before data, before yeah. fucking everybody. It's interesting. Well, it's a hair. It's a hair that's bothering me. I guess <laughs> I like in that. in that moment she is the most scientifically minded of them all. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah. So that's another thing is that she has the air of like a scientist doctor yes. versus mm-hmm. like Beverly who has the air of like I'm like a almost like a triage doctor. Because she she almost seems like she responds in like a big, like she's almost like an ER doctor. That's what it, she reminds me of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's it's that exasperated. Oh, now I got to save these lives now. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, is another emergency happening? Oh, blah blah blah. Whereas Pulaski yeah. seems more like I actually do a lot of research, but I also save patients on the side. Sort of like air. I like to the her. party as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so. n- no, yeah, you, you make a lot of sense. Yeah, she she seems like she knows what she's doing, and she if she had a kid, she wouldn't leave him to die. Alone. <laughs> um, she she'd be smart and just not have children. Well, <laughs> truth. Hashtag. Does truth. Pulaski have any children? No, I don't think so. That. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. All right, um, win for Doctor Pulaski. <laughs> rats in a maze, and so then, so then they're like, uh, "What? What could it be? I don't know." And then this fucking the Geico, the Geico fucking lizard shows up. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and it's like, a, a, a hello, friends. Uh, don't be scared. I'm just a lizard. My name is Rango. Um, and <laughs> you're mixing what? so many things, man. What are you doing? <laughs> They're like, why are you? Why are you so armed? I, I've gone to the trouble to look like you. And and I'm like, no, you look nothing like a human. You look like a weird fucking ghoul, dude. Yeah, he he doesn't look anything like a person. You have, first of all, you have weird dead eyes, dude. Yeah. And like move weirdly and then what's up with that weird skin dude make your skin like normal colors like if this that is we're what you used think to a human looks like you yeah. you need better eyes sir. Yeah. or maybe maybe he sees our true self reptilian oh mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh well i mean this was a higher level of consciousness deigning to See? you know associate with us so it's kind of like what if we did our best to look like ants mm-hmm. and talk to them mm-hmm. how good that would makes- we look that makes a lot of fucking sense, dude. You know, dude, man, dude, roadside picnic. Yeah. So boom, f- fucking the Geico guy <laughs> is like, hey, you know, I just, um, you know, he, my name is uh, Nanu or what is his name? Na- Nagilum. 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 Uh, which is uh, Mul- <laughs> It's which is Mulligan backwards. <laughs> which oh. is oh. a it's a it's a reference to something it's a reference to someone Golf. associated with star trek i forget what it was mulligan <laughs> um no oh, no sorry it wasn't a reference to something in star trek it's a reference to an actor they wanted to play nagilam but um uh but they didn't get him so christopher walken uh. i think let me look it up right now uh it was supposed to be richard mulligan oh who was supposed to play nagilam so. And so, so Nagilam starts naming everybody in the bridge. He's like Jordy, Riker, <laughs> Haskell, you, you old rascal, <laughs> Haskell, and, the rascal, yeah, and, Waskily and, Haskell, yeah. And he knows everybody. He's like, he's like, he's like, and then, and then he goes to the doctor. He's like, "What are you? You're different." And <laughs> and he does something to her because she's like, "Oh my god, yeah." Why? I, I don't, I, I don't know what she does, dude. But why he, does he do that to her? Does he? Yeah, hate I think he's probing her. I think he's probing her, dude. Oh if I'm no, being honest. God, so this. It's all yeah. Already been two episodes, and there are already two aliens violating women's bodies. 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, can, I guess you can interpret fucking... it as him feeling her up real, real bad. No. Yeah. Yeah. As she Cause, spins cause, around. Because he, 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 he does say, well, this one's different than the, than the other ones. But why did he do it to, to uh, Deanna Troy? What did he yeah, I was there? having that thought too. It's like, wait, what? What's so different about her? No, in his, fact, his she's eye- half Betazoid. No, his eyes yeah, are even bad. more different. His yeah. eyes are terrible, so he couldn't even see her because she was yeah, slightly he's got behind those lizard eyes. He's got two eyelids. <laughs> okay, because I was about to say, Deanna looks visually the the most different in uniform as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, and also like the doctor has short hair, so you could be like, well, you know, short hair, uh, same kind of. Deanna's the one who looks really different. Mm. Um, and so, um, and then they're like, oh, well, some of us are masculine, some of us are, are, are you know, are, are females. What do you? What, what do about Worf, who's a completely different species? Yeah, and he's got two dicks. <laughs> so, um, so you have and- <laughs> two dicks. <laughs> yeah and 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 he's like that's how we propagate our our species you fucking bitch and <laughs> and then the 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 geico guy is like hey can you demonstrate that for me how that's done and he's just dirty yeah. dude this, <laughs> this lizard's so dirty uh, he's just he knows, he, he knows. <laughs> he's like well you will tell you show me like how to watch yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like go to the go to the fucking holodeck yeah, that's what everybody he's does. just ego the living planet he's just go, he's just going yeah. by and going, i like to watch and <laughs> yeah other people yeah. fuck <laughs> yeah and then he's that like, canonically ego the living planets voice <laughs> and dialogue <laughs> not his voice but just why just did the, you liken it to him <laughs> just <'cause laughs> invent things well because in the movie in, in the guardians of the galaxy 2 movie he just goes around the galaxy fucking every woman he finds <laughs> well he's then he's true. not watching he's participating well then he yeah. likes to watch yeah. afterward um, okay <laughs> so he so he this Fine. uh this um Nonsense guy. What's his name? N- 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 <laughs> Nagilum. Nagilum. Just keep calling him Geico. <laughs> so the Geico, Geico turtle. Gecko. Geico gecko. Uh, he's like, hey, so you guys expire, right? Like you guys die, mm-hmm. and he, and they're like, yeah, well, you know, it's called death and stuff. Uh, it, well, he says your minds call it death, mm-hmm. uh, and they're like, yeah, and and then he kills uh, Haskell, the rascal dude. Yeah, in a really like shocking like death yeah. scene. It's yeah. kind of like, like like scanners, right? Except yeah, his head you looks, yeah, like you do that. expect yeah, like so, o- either blood coming out of his eyes or yeah. something, or yeah. ears at least. Yeah, 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 yeah. It stops short of like special effects, but it is somewhat like upsetting. Although yeah. I I can't help but laugh because I was previous to ever watching this episode ever, like even with my first watch through of season two, mm-hmm. I only knew this scene from a GIF on the internet. Oh yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of a guy saying, "I have to deal with it," <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with the sunglasses over his face <laughs> as he <laughs> as he can't yeah. handle it. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it, it, it's it's the type of performance. His death is the type of performance where, in context, it's horrifying, and then you take it slightly out of context, and it's hilarious the way he rolls yeah. backwards. Yeah. It is hilarious, and like grabs his hands in like a prayer position and goes, "Yeah." Aw. <laughs> and then, all that and build up like it, it's great acting but it's also <laughs> like hilarious overacting uh, it's, doctor, it's his time to shine this actor he had to like yeah this is my moment I, I hope he I had hope. a long and storied career afterward <laughs> yeah oh i hope he at least got like an agent out of this or something you know something cool um <laughs> yeah, but this, something cool this, yeah. this doctor Get something cool <laughs> this doctor is is smarter than Beverly. Uh, she's got two two things. She's got the little reader thing and it looks really fucking high tech. And she's got the sticky thing and she <laughs> sticks them. And he's like nothing, nothing. And then it's like, he's like he's fucking gone, he's fucking <laughs> gone, dude. And then Luke Picard gets fucking upset, dude. And it's he's like, the most upset damn. you've you've yeah. seen him in the sh- in the show yeah. so far. Well, and and then I thought this would be a good episode if if. Jason Statham was in the ship for <laughs> reals. Uh-huh. He would have told him, take your shirt off, oil yourself up. You're going to go out there and <laughs> fucking fight this we have to, lizard. We have yeah. to activate protocol transporter. Yeah. <laughs> Gr- everybody grease them up. <laughs> Everybody's hands on them. We got to grease Re- them up. The, we, we need to run the replicator t- w- <laughs> with all the with all of the computer's power. Yeah. <laughs> To cover, divert all power to, to motor oil. Yeah, to, to the replicator to make motor oil and and bicycle <laughs> pedals. <laughs> they just launch him out there. I don't know if this is the like best time to mention this, but I've never seen the transporter. Oh, <laughs> you have to, dude. So all of these references always go right over Here's my head. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. You you when you finally watch it, like it's fun, 
but it's just hilarious how like there's certain things about it that are like they feel so low budget like <laughs> like the, <laughs> the the music is just like the most generic like like it's like there's like no beat to it like it's just like music randomly playing in fight scenes um well and- the they they progressively got more money more budgets <laughs> yeah yeah other. as the transporter movies went on but like yeah yeah but the first one is just kind of just like a lot of it's just like i i am transporting things oh i find a woman uh, and and then fight the, like the motor oil fight choreography scene is just like 10 of the same roundhouse kick over yeah. and over again they're like more roundhouse kicks yeah it's more just keep 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 roundhouse kicking yeah that sounds pretty <laughs> solid yeah uh so so satham isn't in this episode so they're like oh fuck it and yeah. he's like he's like motherfucker you don't do that i can't allow you to do this you fucking piece of shit yeah and he's like he's like i must amass information about every aspect of of, of life you i need to know about all kinds of dying and and then he, then this this fucking geico lizard's like dude i'm gonna take about a third or half of your crew to <laughs> figure this out i'm gonna kill him <laughs> Yeah, and 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 then Worf was like, "Oh fuck, this is what I was worried all about." God damn it. <laughs> why, why did we come here? I told why you we should have blown yeah. it up. God yeah. damn it. I told <laughs> you I was scaled. <laughs> um, you didn't listen. Be, I, I want I want that scene where Worf is like, "Captain, I told you." <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, so this Geico guy, it, well, he doesn't kill everybody right away. He's like, I'm, I'm going to give you some time to figure this out. And then I'm going to start killing. The yeah, killing yeah. will start at noon local time. <laughs> uh, and so it gives Picard to go, go to the conference room and they could have gone to the bar. If, if half of people are going to die, <laughs> we're like, everybody just go to the bar. We're going to get fucked they, up. They do their <laughs> meeting at the bar. <laughs> yeah, they should Let's be get fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Um, just pound back a few cold ones as they, yeah. <laughs> Let me take a couple of shots before we make a decision. <laughs> and and Worf's like, look, 30, 50% casualties, not that bad. Yeah. In a battle. Yeah. But he's like, motherfucker, this isn't a battle, dude. You fucking battle hungry fool. <laughs> um, and the doctor's like, that would be appalling. Nah, we, we don't need that shit. That's not acceptable. Yeah. And so, and, and like, d- from all accounts, it feels like he's going to do it for reals. Like, you know, where the the closest thing we come to comparing this to is is, is a lab experiment. Uh, yeah, doctor was right, and he's probably going to do it. Yeah, you know, the odds are he's going to do it. And he's like, he's like, yeah, we could all agree that he's going to fucking do it. And he's like, well, on the, under these circumstances, I think there's only one thing to do. And Riker's like, what? We're all going to fuck. Turn off the lights and play who? Turn off the lights and play who's in my mouth? And he's like, no, you fucking sick bastard. <laughs> That We're happen? Gonna... <laughs> I'm sure he's thought about it this whole goddamn he's time. He's thinking about it all the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days we're going to get in a in, in a situation where it's a lose lose situation, and that's the day we play. Yeah, and Riker turns to his left. And yeah, his right. He's all he's th- like... lights off. He's like Wesley, lights off. Dude. Get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out of here, dude. <laughs> uh... <laughs> you don't want any of this shit, Dewey. Uh... <laughs> Uh, get <laughs> out of here wesley <laughs> uh, and and he's all what what are, what are we gonna do he's like we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna fucking blow up the fuck we're basically gonna blow up the ship dude. yeah <laughs> out of spite yeah completely fuck out of spite yeah yeah it feels that way which and, makes see, this is this is the thing this makes picard like he is such a man of his principle that he's like fuck you i'm gonna blow myself up well, not just yeah. himself, but everyone else on the ship, which is the weirdest thing to me. Like he's like, given I, all of his other decisions and and other stances on things before this, this all uh, this felt really odd to me personally. Yeah, I kind of like it just because to him it's just such an abomination of an idea. Yeah, that he's just like we can't. It, it would he doesn't want to like feel like he doesn't want to violate his principles. Basically, he's he's a man of extreme extreme. Adherence well, the first thing principles. he said was, we're going to fight you. Right, yeah, we'll right. fight you, bitch. And then that eventually boils down to, you can't fire us, we quit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean. But like, it's it's really like, it's, I don't it's know, literally, you didn't win to me. <laughs> yeah, 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 literally, it's you didn't win. You'll but, never have my glory. I'm dump, I'm jumping off the stage yeah, and I'm going to down B while I do it. You'll never have my glory. He's like, I will turn this Monopoly board over so you don't win, you fuck 
fucking son of a bitch. So um, so he's like, so the doctor's like, uh, why do I have a feeling I joined this ship? At the yeah, that's time. a good. <laughs> Um, and so they but head like, over what to about the, all the other families and civilians on the ship. They knew what they were signing up for. <laughs> yeah. The captain can activate the self destruct at any moment. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> that is true. I feel yeah. like everyone should at least be aware of that fact on their way. Like, on. I would never yeah. want, like, like a lot, there's a lot of members on, like, a lot of Enterprise members who are civilians, it's because they're family members and stuff. So it's like, sure. Like, you just described the ship as a cruise ship with yeah. guns on it yes. just last episode. Yeah, but, th- but there are some people on the Enterprise who are there just because they want to travel and, like, see the galaxy. But I would never do that if I was in this universe. I'd be like, I don't want to go on the flagship. Like, you know how many fucking things happen to this ship? Like, like if I see camera time. crews following the bridge around, I am out of here. <laughs> I have a question. So when they went to that fuck planet where everyone like was like trying to fuck them, you know, yeah. the erotic planet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Did anybody? So only the the away crew got got to go. Like none of the people. Like what if everybody else in the crew was so, like, so the yeah, idea we is fuck, so, dude. Yeah. So the I- idea is supposed to be that they didn't know if the planet was safe. So send the away crew. So they can like spend a few days and be like, it's all good. We fucked everybody. Yeah. They're all fuckable. Every- yeah. Uh, send send the rest of the sloppy ship. seconds. <laughs> send the rest of the ship so we can all fuck. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, that's where Riker got the idea for who's in my mouth. <laughs> um, so, so they go to this room. I don't, I don't recognize this room they're in. Have we seen it before? I think it's an engineering. Okay. Well, they're like, all right, let's see. Yeah, it is an engineering. Often. Let's kick the tires and light the fires, baby. Because yeah. self destruct like, basically is turning off the safeties around the warp core. Ooh. So the warp core will just collapse on itself, and the ship just. That's 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 that'd be beautiful to watch. <laughs> and so so Luke Picard is like, okay, he sets it off. Basically, he sets it off, and Riker agrees to it, and he set it for twenty minutes, which is a weird time. And also, like this this fucking Geico turtle could could, could really just kind of Thanos snap the shit out of it. Yeah, and, what the and, the, the turtle. Geico would be like, oh my God, they're about to blow themselves up. I should yeah. just do my experiment now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fuck that. I'm going to take them before they take them. Unless up. this is part of his experiment. He wants yeah. to see how they react to this type of threat. Yeah. And so Picard Ooh, goes back to his brain. I don't know what room he's in here. Is, is this his quarters? Room? Is this normal quarters? quarters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's he does. He's, this is what he does dime. in the last twenty minutes of his life. Yeah, he, <laughs> he goes <laughs> <just> sitting there <laughs> looking sour. And yeah. So he's sitting in his quarters and he's and he puts on some music and it's and then he hears a knock and he turns off the song. Yeah, <clears throat> and he's like, "Oh, well, fuck! Who the fuck is this?" And it's it's Deanna Troy, and he's like, "Oh, well, this is my chance. I'm no longer <laughs> my only <laughs> chance." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and he, he she basically is like, "Hey, <clears throat> I forgot to tell you something. I feel like um, I forgot to mention it. Like maybe you're doing the wrong thing here. Yeah, you're and, being and, a bitch." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he's like, I think and then she sits down. She doesn't ask permission. She just fucking assumes he wants her to sit down. Yeah. And she sits down. And yeah. he's like, Yeah, look, listen, I think and then the, the doorbell rings again. They're like, Oh, who the fuck is, is this? Sitcom? Now? Yeah. It's <laughs> Data. <laughs> and Data's like, Hey, I have a question. And he comes in and he's and and he's like, All right, what the fuck do you want, Data? And he's like, What's death? And this is where the episode gets really Did, Yeah, I ca- I captured uh, this uh, speech Picard gives because this is actually one of the more famous uh, Picard speeches where he's just talking about nature of death. So here we go. It's a good one. I have a question, sir. Yes, Dana, what is it? What is death? Oh, is that all? <laughs> oh, data. You're asking probably the most difficult of all questions. Some see it as a changing into an indestructible form. Forever unchanging, they believe that the purpose of the entire universe is to then maintain that form in an earth-like garden, which will give delight and pleasure through all eternity. On the other hand, there are those who hold to the idea of our blinking into nothingness. With all of our experiences and hopes and dreams 
Merely a delusion. Which do you believe, sir? Considering the marvelous complexity of the universe, its clockwork perfection, its balances of this against that, matter, energy, gravitation, time, dimension, I believe that our existence must be more than either of these philosophies. That what we are goes beyond Euclidean or other practical measuring systems, and that our existence is part of a reality beyond what we understand now as reality. Yeah, I, it's a very interesting philosophical detour the episode takes into just because, I mean, yeah, because it, it, and I like that the first part where he's talking, he's talking about religion in the first one, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. it's always interesting how when you talk about like either like a religion or a society anthropologically, like it becomes, it sounds so strange and weird, Yeah, uh, which I really like. Like there's a famous anthropological um, study in air quotes on the people called the Nasi Rama. And then they, uh, they, they basically did like an anthropological study on these people, explain their habits and blah, blah, blah. And it sounds so strange and foreign. And it turns out it's just Americans because <laughs> Nasi right. Rama is American backward. Uh, so, so I, 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 you know, stuff like that. I find it's it's just always interesting when you see stuff being recontextualized in sci-fi as, oh, this is what a religion is. It's people who think they're gonna end up in a garden forever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're ugly bags yeah. of mostly water. Yeah, yep. yeah, yep. And <clears throat> this is where I, the, it's the great part of the episode because <clears throat> I like the the philosophical part of this show. I like that. That he did say all these these things that he basically said, well, look, you either believe you you believe in religion or you don't. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then he and then he's like, well, what do you believe in? And he's like, well, I believe in like a third thing, which is kind of a weird. It's kind of a weird hybrid of both, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you break it down, <clears throat> which I don't subscribe to. I think we just there's nothingness, and I <laughs> subscribe to the French, the French way of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, <clears throat> and uh, uh, and French. I like that. I like I like the thought. And I think humans are very very involved. If anything, the l the last five years have shown us is that we are very involved and we're very stupid. <laughs> we're mostly bags of mostly water. Yeah. Yep. Um, dirty water. <laughs> <laughs> um and so, racist water <laughs> racist water dude <laughs> oh god um and Ugh. and so i this is what i love out of the episode this is this is a part that that really is kick-ass and then <clears throat> and then and then data goes um well i think i think that that you're wrong for for doing this like this you, we shouldn't do this and then uh so did deanna troy she's like well I I feel like part of the ship doesn't want to die. I'm I'm part of that that group of people. Like I don't I don't mm -hmm. want I, I don't want to die. Mm -hmm. And then he realizes like something is not fucking right, dude. He realizes something is wrong when Data calls him Jean Luc. Yeah, right. Yeah, because he he's would like, never yeah, do that, Jean Luc. And he's like, oh, something's afoot here. And he's like, he calls for the computer to tell him where Data's at. He's like, mm -hmm. where's where's Commander Data? And the computer's like, he's on the bridge. And he's like, ah, you sly little bitch. <laughs> uh, and they, he disappears. And it's it's the Geico lizard and shape shifting and shit. Yeah. Um, it's not even shape shifting. Like it's a like a weird hologram. I don't know. I mean, like it's an illusion. A hologram or, or illusion. Yeah. yeah. So he's some sort of wizard. Yeah. He's like Doctor Strange. Mm -hmm. Dormammu? What was the, the, the guy's name for Doctor Strange? Oh, Dormammu. Yeah, Dormammu was the name. Dormammu. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so he's wanting these people to, to die a million deaths. Um, <laughs> and so that he disappears, the Geico lizard disappears. And then Riker's like, Hey, we're out of the fucking hole, dude. We got out of that slit. If you know what I mean? Yeah, let's fly uh, away and, as fast yeah, as possible. <laughs> yeah. And, and he's like, should I turn off this self-destruct thing? <laughs> we don't want to die. And he's like, nah, leave it on for a bit. <laughs> uh, he, he gets to the bridge and he's like, uh, Wesley, you're back. I thought you died. Uh, <laughs> he's like, Mr. Crusher, hit the pedal in any fucking direction. Just hit the fucking pedal and they fucking uh, floor it, dude. Yeah. And they floor it. And then, and then they finally like, <clears throat> they get far enough. And he's like, all right, did we get away? Are we really, truly away? And Dita's like, yeah, we're, re we're really going this fast. It's, it's happening, man. Yeah. And then the captain's like, all right, let's finally, let's set this self-destruct mode. 
Tough. We also asked Deanna. It's like, hey, uh, Deanna, what what are you thinking? Deanna's like, he's fucking gone, dude. Yeah, he's gone. <laughs> turn it off. Turn, turn, turn it off. Turn it off. Oh god. Yeah. <laughs> and and Riker, then, yeah. <laughs> Riker, what does he say? And he, to confirm? He oh yeah, just he, say yeah. yeah because confirm. Picard's like, yes, uh, deactivate, and then computer goes, does does Commander Riker concur? And he goes something like, yes, most exce- most indubitably, I definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Says, yes, absolutely. I do indeed concur wholeheartedly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got, yeah that's what he says. Yeah. With a cherry on top. <laughs> pretty please. Um, pretty oh. please. And then Warp is so- like, I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know, yeah. He shits his pants, dude. Um, just Warp just calling his tank off. He Warf's lashes like, out in violence because he's scared. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He says, oh, thank God these, 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 these uniforms are dark or there'd be shit stains all over this. Um, and then um, and then and then he's like, all right, well, yeah, it's uh, yeah, simple. Yes, would have sufficed, dude. Fucking weirdo. And he's like, all right, you have the bridge. And then he goes, the captain goes to his bridge to, I assume, masturbate. Like, if, <laughs> when you're in a near-death experience like that. He's like, oh, I'm so pent up. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, and then and then Wesley's like, woof. Uh, you know, like the captain, his bluff. He he was really going for it, huh? And then Riker's like, what if he wasn't bluffing? What if he would have <laughs> killed us all? You son and of then a bitch. Data's just like, ooh, <laughs> yeah. yeah Data has interesting. he has a weird smile earlier in the episode when um, Pulaski admits that Data is indeed alive. Based on oh yeah, stuff. I actually really like that little character moment for him. He's like yeah, yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's it's I'm one alive. of the it's one of the few like um like times you see data like just actually like oh the emotion does come through somehow and also comes through again with that same smile. This is also an episode where like for some reason Jordy has a lot of like one liners like <laughs> like he's like ah oh, I don't you know like what the like the mouse said you forget the cheese just let me out of this trap you know. <laughs> And then, like when they blow up the warbird, it's, a, it's like a reaction shot of Jordy with a huge shit eating grin on his face. <laughs> well, today in this episode, he did have one one liner um, when he says, "Like it's a, it's like a really ugly nothing." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. When he like sees when he sees when Geico data because data says, time. "Yeah, data goes, it's still nothing, com- Captain." And he goes, "It's a bunch of ugly nothing." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, a bunch of bunch of so zing, many, so many one liners. Jordy. They um, were trying to give him some lines so that he can keep his sag. <laughs> yeah, sag cards. <laughs> yeah, don't want to make it get that little sag card lapsing. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> we have one more scene before the, the episode ends, and it's the uh, Geico Lizard. He comes on the computer and he's like, Hey baby, that's me again. <laughs> and he's like, That's essentially what it's like. <laughs> yeah. Hey baby. And, <laughs> yeah, everyone. Well, and, and the captain's like, Oh fuck, what do you want, dude? And he's like, Hey, I I, I didn't have to kill you guys. I came to my conclusions. Uh, all on my owns without your help, your death help. Yeah, and he's like, I mean, right, your well. speech was enough, I guess. Yeah, and he's like, he's like, do you, do you want to know what the findings were? Do you want to know which one of them were cowards? <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he's like, and then Picard just starts punching his his monitor screen. <laughs> yeah. Where are they? I Where mean, they? <laughs> fucking bitch. Uh, and then, and then, uh. <laughs> And then he basically breaks down like Picard, like, "Hey, you find no tranquility, qu- tranquility in every anything. Uh, you struggle against the inevitable. Uh, you thrive in conflict. You thrive on conflict." He says, uh, "You va- yet you value loyalty." Uh, and then he like he like breaks them down. Dude. You're rash, quick to judge, slow to change. Um, well, this is an indictment of humanity. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then Picard doesn't object. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he's like, like it's amazing. Oh, yeah, it's it's amazing. It's amazing you guys have survived. Yeah. You fucking unevolved monkeys. And so anyway, uh, that was basically the end. Um and he basically says well, you're too aggressive. You're too well, hostile, well, too militant. Picard replies, his reply is, well, you know, there are there is one thing we share in common. We're both yeah. very curious. Yeah. And then Gilam goes, sure, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like, maybe you'll see me later sometime. See you around, baby. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then he basically tells Nagilam, but next time I'll see you in the stars. I don't know what that is. Is that a threat? Yeah. Like well, next yeah, time we like, see I, you, I, we'll I'm going to put on a suit and come out. And, like, <laughs> we're going to, they're going to take this outside, buddy. Yeah. yeah. What does that mean? He's He's all, be- I'm here. I'm here. Huckleberry. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's a weird fucking Western threat. Um, I'll see. I'll, we'll walk on the stars naked if you want. <laughs> and he's like, what does that mean, dude? And then the guy goes and disappears and takes his deals with him. Yeah. No more 20% off car insurance. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, they, they go back on course and, uh, you know, they, they live to see. They live to die another day, as they say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, there's one more little uh, one-liner from Riker. It's like, well, and if you see any more holes, steer oh, clear. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. That's my favorite line. <laughs> hey, if you see any holes, don't tongue go in I them. can't you imagine know I mean? Riker being the one to steer clear of holes. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, and no. He's, and he smiles when he says it. And yeah. Wesley's like, Yeah, you know he it. doesn't mean <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. Wesley's like, nah, bitch, I'm going yeah. right. <laughs> yeah, we're going in the holes. That's my boy. Um, and that's because he's his dad uh, now. Yeah. As it's of last dad. episode, he agreed. Y- yeah, they're yeah. they're all their dad. They're, they're all his dad now. Yeah. Yep. It's like three men and a baby. Yeah, yep. in a way, that's actually what happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um and hey, look, there's a lot of things to love about this episode. There's a lot of things to hate. Uh, mostly the Geico Lizard. Fuck you. <laughs> bad, bad, bad Geico Lizard. Uh, but I like I like the philosophy in it. I like that that stuff. I like. I dug mm-hmm. it. Didn't need the whole fucking holodeck uh, scene. I don't know why. I think because they had I to feel some just stuff. That it didn't. Uh, they had didn't, some holes to fill. Yeah, they they. <laughs> yeah, they they just uh they just um uh they just needed to fill some time, and they're just yeah. like eh. This is- there. Well, uh, the more we talked through this episode, and I think I ha- I was starting to form this thought while watching the episode itself, is that like this this being or this entity is essentially doing what Q did at the beginning. In a way, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. He's a lot less emotional than Q is. He, he, I guess he's a lot more inquisitive. Like he doesn't have a formed opinion about humans yeah. yet. Yeah, and Q, but, Q is like at the beginning is downright vindictive and just is mean. Yeah, like Q is like after humans and like he has like, hey, you guys suck. You guys suck. Prove to me you don't suck. And this guy is like, what are you guys? What's up with you? Oh, it turns yeah. out you suck. That's the type yeah. of alien I think is more interesting in the first time Q shows up just because it's more of like, what are you? I've never, it's like, if you see like a, like a spider in your house and you're, but like, you're not afraid of spiders, but you just look at the spider and go, huh, what kind of spider is that? You just start poking at it with a stick. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it, and it is also yet another, um, entry well, how big are these spiders that you're poking at with a stick? Like higher beings. <laughs> Wait, I missed it. What, what, what Ricardo said? Uh, Ricardo said, uh, how big are these spiders that you're poking at it with a stick? <laughs> well, sometimes depending on where, I remember when I took a trip to Korea, I, saw some of the biggest spiders I'd ever seen in my life just hanging out on walls and they're bright and orange. It's nice. like the size of a hand. Just cool. All, but with long thin legs. I was like, oh my God. That's well, probably- those are encounters. If you touch them, it like the, the screen blurs and then you get into a battle. <laughs> Oof. Yeah. Well. No, that- wait, it's Korea. It's MMO rules. Yeah, I will get so into have to a- control click it and then you start battling it. Yeah, I, I, it turns into a Ragnarok online. <laughs> yep. Uh, where silence has lease everyone Ricardo what would you give out of 10 starships so I like the philosophy in this episode but I don't like the holodeck part Um, but it was good I guess it was fine overall like it's better than a lot of the episodes from first season so uh, I'm gonna go seven and a half okay okay how about you Dan I'm right around there too um, I think my personal biggest problem with the episode is Picard's stance and decision about self-destructing. Because when when Deanna and Data, like the fake Deanna and Data, come in and they start saying like, well, not everyone wants to die. And I'm one of the people who kind of doesn't want to like right away. This seems unfair. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of with them. Like, I agree. Mm-hmm. And and then Picard says, you shouldn't be reacting this way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, what the hell's wrong with you? Why don't you want to die with me? You idiots. <laughs> Why don't you want to die with me? Uh, uh, in fact, I would have, I, I would have actually really liked to know how Worf was handling this oncoming death. No, oh, he's probably like sick. I'm gonna die with honor. <laughs> and if so, I wouldn't. I want to see that. You know, so, I, I would have liked to see it. So that's the 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 suggestion I would have had for improvement for the episode is that. The the decision to self destruct should have come at the thirty minute mark, and mm. the rest of the episode, and make the self destruct last an hour, right? Okay. And the rest of the episode is following uh, all the cast and crew 
well, the, 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 the cast and crew of the show, but like uh, following the members of the crew around on the Enterprise and what they do with the last hour of their life, you know? No, I, I, I dig I dig that premise. I like that. Because like that would work just as well and still eventually lead to an opportunity for Picard to do his cool yeah, speech and all that. and that would allow for a more organic, some characters are going, I don't think we should do that. I would prefer to risk not dying instead of definitely dying. Uh, well, yeah, like I would, pre- I would prefer a little more like actual debate about it. But it's also, it also seems like a position that would be hard for Picard to defend for long. Well, that's the thing. If you if you create a, it's one of the things of that's you could potentially do as a good writer is just like find some sort of justification for your character to do that, and that could have been a good challenge. Uh, yeah, the if ri- they had found a uh, like a good reason to give Picard for yeah. this self destruct decision. Then I would have been, you know, yeah, I mean, like it, it, it could have been. He could have made it. This is this is actually like almost like a modified version of of the of the trolley problem. You know, it's like, do you let half the ship die or do you definitely let the whole ship die? You know, it's like the trolley problem. The classic trolley problem is, you know, a trolley is approaching a junction on one junction where it's set for the, the default. Five people are, are tied to it. But if you switch it, the trolley over to the next junction, it's just one person. So would you rather let five people die or be directly responsible for one person dying? Right. Well, then this is like the converse of that, where would you rather? Well, and it's not even a guarantee that everyone will die. It's like, will you let a a third of the people die or will you be directly responsible for the death of everyone? Yeah. And like one thing I could think of that Picard might have done is as like, we don't know how he's going to kill them. Like he said, he wanted to see all manner of death. We just saw Haskell die in a horrifically painful way. I would rather us all die instantly than to die various different horrific deaths just to please the curiosity of some sort of all knowing being. And like, you know, I could see an argument that's, for that. That that that's a fair point, and the show could have done a little more to illustrate that, but it didn't too. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, it, like that that yeah. could have been a way to like uh, better support Picard's um, stance on it, and I would have appreciated that. Yeah, I I I just would have loved to have seen because like I I I like the idea that that when Picard is about to die, <laughs> he just hangs out in his room. Listening. listening to in the mood <laughs> so like what's everyone else is Riker just jerking it he's like I, I gotta get it all out before harp, I harp ladies harp ladies <laughs> I refuse to die full yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna shit yeah. and then I'm gonna yeah <laughs> like I'm fucking uh, uh, Pulaski's in 10-4 just I must meet drinks. my maker in a drained state <laughs> yeah Data is like, oh, well, I'm still the office. I'm still lieutenant. So I'm just gonna stay on the bridge and do my job. You know, Wesley's like, oh, I should have. I shouldn't have stayed on the Enterprise. You know, I should have like, gone home th- to my mom. <laughs> with all, <laughs> with all of this talk of death, like this actually would have been an opportunity to bring up Tasha. That mm-hmm. would have, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, see. That could have been an interesting yeah, thing for they, Data to that's wrestle why, with. That's why I wanted hap, yeah, and he talks to Picard, right? He says, is there an afterlife? Might I see yeah. Tasha again? You know, yeah. that would have been cool, Stuff like right? that, that would have been, really, been really sick. cool. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I wanted the, the self-destruct to happen at the halfway point, so they could have all this time to figure no, this yeah, out. yeah, I agree with you. I agree with oh, you. That would have been really cool. Now I'm, now I want this episode. <laughs> where i see all well, these characters I, I, I'll, I'll adjust my score down to 7.25 now that i know <laughs> what could have been uh yeah yeah I, i'm gonna make mine an eight i was originally thinking an eight and a half but <laughs> now that i want that too much because it, it just sounds so much more interesting Cause, it does because like because like the, the the mystery scenes where they're trying to figure out what it was in the first place was fine but mm-hmm. it definitely could have been like half the episode versus like well, yeah because like the various things that they encounter are all like they could be anything like yeah all this stimuli could have been literally anything to make them react yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so 
Like, oh, well. and in fact, it's almost like just like messing with the audience. Really, it's like, well, you know, Romulans, right? Look at them, like, like they're here. Whoa, hey, what <laughs> does this mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 a bunch of red herrings about like, yeah, what basically, be, yeah, about what's going yeah, on. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, but yeah, well, where where silence has a lease. That was fun though. I I I uh I do I do I did remember that episode fondly and did have a lot of fun watching it back again. Just mm-hmm. a lot of nostalgia for me. No, no nostalgia for Ricardo at all, though. Not at all, except <laughs> for the Geico lizard. <laughs> he was nostalgic for the Geico gecko. Yeah, like very lightly nostalgic for me because I was like, "Oh yeah, that ugly face." <laughs> uh, the full, next episode, full green dust. <laughs> <laughs> episode we're going to watch next week is Elementary Dia Data, which is the first episode we see Data dressed up as Sherlock Holmes. Ooh. Oh boy, here we go. Uh, one of the, it's coming. Yeah. People often describe second season episodes as being like very good and very bad. Um, a lot of people think this might be the one of the very bad ones. But uh Ooh. I actually don't remember exactly how this one went, but it's just like, you know, a continuation of Brent Spiner's quest to not be data sometimes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh but anyway, you guys Thanks for listening to be Star Trek. If you somehow got here by accident and want to watch more, not I always say that every I say that every time. Watch more, uh, listen to more episodes. You can find them at newbiestartrek.com. That's n e w b i e star trek dot com, or wherever else you find your podcasts. You know, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, yeah. uh, Podcast Addict, Stitcher, Podcast, Spotify, yeah. Audible. And all if, the places. If you're going to do it on Apple Podcasts, uh, maybe if you have some time, you can give us a review. Let us know what you think about the show. Uh, you know, we're, we're trying our best. Good or bad. We don't give a shit, dude. Yeah. If it's bad, it entertains us. If it's yes. good, uh, it makes us, it feeds our ego. So <laughs> it's a win win. Yes. So. <laughs> Either way, it feeds my ego. If I get a bad review, it just means somebody hated me so much they wrote a bad review. And <laughs> I'm okay that, with that. If you're that magic listener who is a huge fan of Jason Statham and Glenn Miller. <laughs> yeah. And dude, let also know. Star Trek. Let us know that we are the perfect podcast for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good. Also, we have another podcast, a Fugitive Frames film <clears throat> podcast. Yes. Where Too we, many fugitives. <laughs> we discuss a video game. No, so yes. not video games. We discuss movies. Yes. Yeah. And uh, sometimes video game movies. Yes. Yes. One of our oh, episodes. We, was we should, we should say uh, this is going to be released next week, Marvin. Mm hmm. OK. So um, uh, stay tuned because this week or next, we're going to be releasing um, an episode. If you're a fan of Mortal Kombat, we're going to be talking about the old Mortal Kombat, the new Mortal Kombat. Mm-hmm. And just Mortal Kombat in general. Mm-hmm. Um, stay tuned for that. Mm-hmm. That'll be fun. I yeah. I um don't remember Mortal Kombat two very well. So, you mean Annihilation? <laughs> yeah, Annihilation. So that'll yeah, okay. be a, an interesting rewatch. <laughs> uh, well, I, I'll I'll talk to you guys later about it. There's something else to this that I want to ask oh. about, but it's not really a oh. Don't need we, to extend. We also have to play no all the video games. Yeah. For context. No, no, not just that. But there is there is still other watchable media. There's true. There was the Mortal Kombat TV show, which I actually watched a lot of when I was younger. <laughs> what you mean the cartoon? No, no. There was no, a, a live show. action TV live action. show. It was bad. Yeah, it was oh, really wait. bad. I forgot yeah. about that one. I honestly but got then there it. was also a cartoon and there was uh, also that uh web, web series or something. Yeah, there was a oh, web yeah. series yeah. that people liked a lot, I guess. <laughs> All right, we're already talking about it. Are we? Do we need to watch any of that? <laughs> no. Okay, movies only, I guess. No. No. It's... Even though, like, I think that web series was supposedly the the like uh people were saying like, well, this is a pretty good take on it. Yeah. Well, At the time. Yeah. Well. If you, but, yeah, but anyway, you can you can find the, the, the Fugitive Frames <laughs> film podcast at Where? fugitiveframes.com or again wherever you listen for podcasts. Yeah. Also, last pitch, uh, future the last plug. <laughs> future it's a plug, not a pitch. <laughs> plug. It pitch. already exists. You don't need to pitch it to nobody. <laughs> I'm pitching it to your viewership. <laughs> My viewership. <laughs> uh, fugitive games. It's a YouTube channel. Let's plays. Uh, 
Right now, we're still going Let's through LA plays Noir. And live streams. Yeah, we're still going to LA Noir and just uh, Phoenix Wright Justice for All Ace Attorney. Um, Although but, not too long ago, we started up uh, well at our last live stream. We started up the Return of the Obra Din, and that's a pretty sick game, man. That game is crazy. Yeah, I didn't great know, mysteries involved. I didn't know it was this interesting to be an insurance adjuster. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm, I'm super stoked to get back into insurance claim adjusting. Oh, I'm going to switch my career from, from media creator to insurance adjuster creator. <laughs> well, only if you have like a sick death watch. <laughs> the memento mor- mortis. Or yeah. mortum? Or was it mort? I thought it was mortis. One of those. It, the one watch. thing it isn't is Memento Mori. Yes, it's Death Watch. Yeah. So, so you can you can find that at uh, URL fugitive dot games or just go to YouTube. Just look for Fugitive Games where you can find yeah. it. Yeah. Watch some ads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, so next week we're gonna watch Elementary Dear Data, a good old Sherlock Holmes Hollow Deck episode, the first of many. So Ooh, holodeck. Yeah, Love so, the holodeck. Yeah, Nothing yeah. but laughs in the holodeck. <laughs> they are surely always going to get the good carkin. Um, holodeck doesn't miss. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll surely get the carkin. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we'll, we'll see you guys next time, next week. You guys stay safe. Uh, thanks for listening. And uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Later. Oh. Buongiorno, bitches. <laughs> <laughs>